to get a ready market for your designs? Oh, it had nothing to do with market at all. I started off just making um, myself happy and basically it's still that. I used to do stuff and give it away. It was my my hobby, my meditation, my personal statement, my wardrobe. It had nothing to do with commerce or political statement. That is much more recent. Okay, what about raw materials? Have you found it difficult to acquire raw materials? It too? comes and goes, it varies. Tong do always have the clothes you want, you have an order. Delta Excel out all the yellow, you can't get gold, whatever. Yeah, it's inconsistent, it's unreliable. You can't budget or plan a year or 18 months in advance because you never know what fluctuations in the market could happen. Just about everybody has to get onto planes and go Curacao, go Venezuela, go Toronto, go wherever, Miami, and get Ting to come back and basically work over imported things. It's a serious situation. I mean, all the, the grand talk about developmental thrust and cultural goods, I don't buy it for a second. I don't think anything is going to change from the official standpoint and believing that what's going to happen is a ground swell from the roots, which is what is happening now, is going to demand that things change and they will make things better for themselves. So would you be able to tell us something about your production level per year? Well, I, I don't keep those figures. I do, um, I do what I do best, which is conceive, conceptualize, aggrandize and color. So to give you figures, you know, like really I'm only now starting professionally with the business of a business. I'm only like two weeks away from opening my first shop. Uh, so I have to see for a year or so what kind of rhythm set up in the seasons and buying and so on and so forth. I mean, I've been working and making things for a number of years and things have always sold, but because the commerce is not my particular interest, I can't give you off the top of my head what my gross nets or ratio percentages are. That is for somebody else to tell you if you ask very much more specific questions. I tend to think in blocks and groups, you know, see things on the stage, see things in terms of color harmonies. It's just a question of a different POVs. Have you ever exported any of your designs or your hand paintings at all? Oh yeah, I've done, um, I've been doing Toronto Caribana for the last couple of years and at that time in summertime, find great response to and demand for like the hot Caribbean colorful product so <clears throat> on my own I've been going to work on the Caribbean and then making things and selling on the side so and there's certainly the market for it and the prices for it so that what I do is I go I work and all the money that I make in commissions I buy and paint raw materials paint mostly brushes Things like that, you know, things that are hard to find and come back. Because I can't take really being in the cold too long. I need to be around in the sun. Because my work is environmentally based, you know, um, inspired by nature in most cases. I prefer to work outdoors <clears throat> in the sunlight and natural light. So that demands not a upstairs um, smoky part of a warehouse somewhere in downtown Toronto, but a backyard in Woodbrook, which is basically what I have now, a mass camp. That's what I'm setting up for myself to work through that model as like a paradigm. You know, we know that Trinidad works at Carnival time. Production works at Carnival time because we know what that is and we understand the pressure of this priority. Um, fashion is yet to catch up, you know, fashion shows start late. It's a lot of slackness, a lot of uh, lack of attention to detail, which as a theater person I find um, quite abhorrent. Uh, I don't want to mess with that. So. And then I think a lot of the, um, <clears throat> the sort of IDC, EDC perspectives have to do with um, principles and practices and procedures that come from a we that don't really apply to the system here. So I think when we have the courage, the courage and the confidence to start studying ourselves as being able to throw up working models like Carnival, kind of like Mass, like the Mass Camp technique of doing things, I think is when this industry as a business, it's a little premature even to call it an industry. It's just really a movement. And we just have to see over the next couple of years how it grows. Okay, in the last 20 years that you have 
been at your business, what would you say was your greatest achievement? Um, I think going off to India, when I got a fellowship in textile design from the Commonwealth Institute, that was kind of like a dream come true personally for me. Um, and the fact that I, I got it on the, on the grounds of portfolio of work, having done a certain amount of work without having any like classical academic training or institute kind of certification on the basis of what I had done in theatre, you know, the eclectic kind of portfolio, I won that scholarship. Um, I chose to go to India because that's what I wanted to study and that gave me a kind of a feeling for the overall design that I wish to incorporate in my life and in production. So that I feel has been my greatest thing of which I'm most pleased and proud to date. Work from that exhibition, I'm still showing, you know, that Indian collection that I call Floaty Doties. It's been several places in the world, lots of places in Trinidad and Tobago. They've been like my magic carpets that have flown me to various places and give me entree where, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> had I been like safe in, in Toronto, for instance, in competition with Japanese or Middle European or Outer European people working in fashion. To do a full frontal attack on that kind of, it's very harshly competitive, right? Very cutthroat. Whereas I took a kind of an oblique approach coming in through the Caribana and the cultural traditions with which I was familiar and developing some kind of of legitimacy or credibility there and then make a lateral shift to say, okay, well, you make this design and cloth and so on and make it into butterfly wings to go dance on the street. You can take the same technique and principle and use it on the evening gown or the screens for your living room or your curtains or whatever. Right. Bottom line for me really I think is colour. Not fashion. You know, I really have no time with fashion. It bores me. When I do fashion shows it's because it's theatre, a stage, that's what I understand. But for me the bottom line is colour, which is why I find myself in Colour Me Caribbean because it seems to be right up my alley, right? Colour is my thing.